Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming Podcast. Hi, I'm Lucy James, and I listen to the One Up Gaming Podcast. Yeah, it's how we do it, y'all. L G E, my straight out of Gang Stop Gas. What up to the One Up Gaming? One up gaming is behind me. Let me get in beast mode. If you wanna try me, you don't need a cheap code. Kante is who I be to you. It's Mr. Hero, legendary adversary. Flows considered lethal. I'm a super saiyan. I got dragon balls. I wouldn't lie. You might think I'm playing when I'm saying I can really fly. When I'm on the track, you feel the energy I'm pushing. I put me on the map. One up gaming is who I'm talking about. I'm the rapping master chief. Epic to say the least Contain the hero better Etch that in your memory And so the one up gaming for the show I'll contain the hero is really gonna show up Hi, welcome to the One Up Game Podcast, episode 328. Still me, David. Don't know what else to say, really. I've got a jumper on for a change. Um, it's getting a bit cold for t-shirts, so I thought I'd put on a nice jazzy jumper. Um, again, you can buy these at our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk. Please visit us, have a look around. Anything you see... It's normally on the top right-hand corner of the screen. It says online store. There's jumpers, T-shirts, different designs, different colours. Click on them. And, yeah, please buy. Um, As always, we're sponsored by Games Inspired Music. It's an album. It's available on Spotify, Amazon, all places. Uh, Just buy the game. Buy the game. Buy the album. And 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play Charity. And other than that, that is about it. So as I say, One Up Gaming, um, our podcast, it's episode 328. And we'll just go through some of the games that we've been playing this week. So first of all, Need for Speed Unbound. Now, I don't know why, but I hear this game name. And I always think of the Ridge Racer Unbounded. Which is a shame, because I can't play Unbounded on my Xbox Series X. But, anyway, Need for Speed Unbound. It looks glorious. Like, the attention to detail, the water effects, the water sheen on the tarmac, or the asphalt, whatever you want to call it over there in the stupid America. Um, but, it looks amazing. I love the style. And then with the little tiny graphical art style over the top, so like the little tiny graffiti styles and the little etches and sketches. Um, so you're going around a corner, do a skid, uh, doing um, drift, there we go. And then like cartoonified smoke effects come up from the back of the car and it's a little tiny touch, but it's different. It's, and I always enjoy something just that little bit different. And the game, it plays really well. It looks nice. It runs smooth. And I'd recommend it. It's a good little game. I was really impressed. I really was. Um, I think some people are just idiots. And because it's something that they don't... I've heard so many comments about like the graphical style. It's not their taste. And the game's crap. So well, the graphical style might not be your taste. But you can turn the, that those um, art style things off in the options so you can play the game as normal and it still looks glorious I love the game so yeah Need for Speed Unbound great game EA you've done really well this time and I think it's the first full game that 
Criterion, Criterion, whoever they are, the guys who normally made the uh, Burnout games, it's their first full game because they've been on like support duty for a year to make like Battlefield and stuff like that. So it's their first full game in about almost ten years, I think, which is amazing to think. But yeah, it's it's a great game. Buy it, please. It's good. Next up, I don't know why I've closed my eyes, I'm really tired. Uh, next up, a game called Flockers. Now, this is really immature British humour. They've called it Flockers because it's about sheep, so it's about flocks. And when you say Flockers, it sounds very much like a swear word. And that's what British humour is. We try to swear, but not quite. And we live on that edge. But... Easiest way I could explain this game is anyone old and remembers the game series Lemmings. Anyone not old, then Lemmings was a 2D side. It's kind of like a platform puzzle game, but you had no direct control over the Lemmings, the little tiny creatures with green hair. And they just walked in line and would just jump off a cliff if the cliff was there and you had to hit one of them with like a stop sign or build a, a, a bridge or dig or explode if needed uh, so imagine that and then that was created by DMA Design who then later changed their name and went into the future slightly and they made the Grand Theft Auto games but this game, Flockers, it looks quite nice, animation-wise, detail-wise, but it's a 2D side-scrolling uh, puzzle platform sort of game. Again, you have no control over your characters. You have icons at the bottom of the screen. You click on it, you select one of them, and then they do that action that you've given. And it is very much just lemmings with a new paint of claws. And... It's not bad. It's nowhere near as good as Lemmings, but then again, I guess for me, Lemmings will be like when you guys probably played Grand Theft Auto as your first ever game. You know, when you're seven, eight, it's like, wow, that's amazing. But for me back then, that was one of the first games that I played, so it was life changing. You know, like it just really blew your mind back then. Looking at it now, it looks crap. But what are you going to do? Next up, Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered. And I love the fact that on the box it says Remastered. You know, so it's actually got the word Mars in there. Because it's, it's Red Faction. It's the reboot of the series that was done. Like the third person sort of view. Um, it's still got the full destruction of the environment. And I love it, you just walk around smashing the hammer against like, the houses. You can knock the full house down, it's really funny. Um, but it's the reboot of the series that was originally on the PS2, that had Geo Mod, so I guess this is the Geo... Is it Geo Mod? Geo Mold? I'm going to go with Geo Mod, because that sounds more like what it used to be. Uh, this is at like, Geo Mod 2.0. Much more destructible scenery. I love the game, uh, it's really fun to play, it's cheap as buttons, and um, by the Red Faction game, the next Red Faction game that came out after this 
I completely blanked on the name of it, but it's the sequel to this, and it wasn't as good because I tried to make it more of a Gears of War third person action sort of game, and instead of being out in the open environment like this one, you're much more in the caves and in the underground of Mars, so it wasn't as good, but this gorilla was really fun, I loved it. Next game, Space Lines from Far Out, and this game... You are about to embark on the luxurious world of... It's like a... a pan-galactic star very sedate... Among the um, strategy the sort of game... Where you've got to... Of sights. You have control over the, the deck... The of the, the bridge of the ship... And you have to... Do orders... To sort of like go to a certain planet... Scan the certain thing... And repair this, repair that, um, add certain icons and things. It's like a top-down view, very simple looking game. It was quite fun. You're probably getting a lot more out of the trailer for the game than me talking, so I'll just shut up and let you watch this. Taking breaks during their shift. Let's increase the size of this flight crew. Do you enjoy shopping? Then what better way to wait for your next connection than visiting some of the fabulous stores along the way? Space may be a lot of fun, but it can also be dangerous. That's why we have rigorous safety guidelines. And our staff will ensure you have the safest, most comfortable flight experience. Remarkable quality and service is our top priority. And that's why we have been consistently evaluated, certified, and approved by the Health Inspection Services. In the unlikely event of space anomalies, our staff is more than prepared to handle any emergency. Even in the harshest conditions, you can rest assured that our passengers are never left unattended. Hey there! No need to look defeated. A destroyed ship isn't a problem if you remember to buy insurance. Why don't we try again? galaxy of adventures awaits, so what are you waiting for? Join us on this cosmic flight, guaranteed to be far out. Next up, the 2014, I believe it was, reboot of Strider. And this one was much more like the Metroid style games where uh, you have to like backtrack and get new icons, new abilities to get through the, the previous levels that you were on. And I love this game. It looks amazing. It plays well, fast, smooth. Everything is really great about it. It'll be cheap as chips now. So I'd recommend, you know, I'd recommend actually someone to pick this game up because it is really good. And the last game that I played this week is called Naraka uh, Blade Point. And the easiest way I can explain this game to me is, can anyone remember the PS2 reboot of Shinobi? Where it was a third person action adventure and it was quite fast uh, running, hacking, slashing from behind view, uh, very similar to that, but 
on like Xbox sort of I, I don't know if it was the Xbox One or the Xbox series of consoles but it's alright it doesn't look great it, it plays nice it looks okay um, fast and um, clear as hell um, the combat was alright it reminds me of similar of a lot of these other like it's not as detailed as like Devil May Cry or the Batman Arkham sort of game but it's nice uh, I'd recommend giving it a quick go see what you think My PS5 did arrive, um, I've got an unboxing video on the YouTube channel so you can have a look at that. My god I was shocked at how big this bloody thing was. I can't believe it, it doesn't go under the TV, it actually stands next to it. It's stupidly large, it's a stupid thing. Um, and that's what you do when you buy stupid things. Um, so uh, as always we've got our Gran Turismo 7 series up on the website, well up on the YouTube channel every week. Uh, we've got our Star Trek Online series every week almost. Worst games ever. I'll have to start doing some more of them. The Ridge Racer 6 series. We do them every Thursday. And we've got the, the podcast, which you're watching now. It comes up every Friday. If you're listening to it, it goes live every Sunday. And that, my friends, is what we've been doing this week. So I'll have a quick 10 second break and we'll be back with this week's news. So back 10 seconds. This is Gilbert Godfrey, and I listen to the One Up Gaming Podcast. And if you don't, go fuck yourself. Do you have trouble sleeping? Tossing and turning all night. Nothing you do seems to help. You're not getting your recommended six to eight hours of sleep each night. Well, now there's a solution. Now there's Fat Cat Fly. With Fat Cat Fly, you'll easily get the sleep that you deserve. Download for free on the iOS App Store, and you're guaranteed to get a good night's sleep with very few side effects, as you help a fluffy kitty eat all the junk food that he wants. Side effects may include sleepless system, desire for cheeseburgers, if erection lasts more than five hours, see a physician. Try Fat Cat Fly today. Visit facebook.com slash fatcatfly, because you deserve a better life. Hi, still David, still one up game is still 328. The 328th episode of the One Up Game podcast. Um, so we're going to have a quick go through some of the news. I'm not sure if some of this stuff's already been covered in previous episodes, but we'll have a quick go through and we'll see how things go. So while well, I'm trying to swallow, oh my throat. <clears throat> Sonic co-creator is re reportedly arrested again for insider trading involving a Final Fantasy game. 
So Sonic the Hedgehog co-creator Yuji Naka is reported for being arrested again for suspected insider trading involved, yeah, involving a Final Fantasy game. Uh, uh, it sounds not great for him, does it? Allegedly bought shares in Final Fantasy VII, the first show to develop by... After finding out the studio was working on the game for Square Enix, but before the information went public. Uh, I guess it's it's not a good thing to do, is it? It's not a good thing. But, yeah, I don't know. We'll call that one a day. Um, so we'll then... I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you do? What do you do? Next bit of news. Microsoft has made a 10-year commitment to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo consoles. It will also stay on Steam. Um, so basically, Phil Spencer has, sh- has shared the news on Twitter alongside confirming Microsoft will continue to offer Call of Duty titles on Steam after the deal is closed. The last time I made my Call of Duty title was on Nintendo consoles for Call of Duty Ghosts on the Wii U. God, who remembers the Wii U? Uh, since then, Nintendo owners have been left behind when it comes to one of the best-selling game franchises of all times. It's amazing when you think of that, because you think best-selling games, they're all on the bloody Switch, aren't they? Uh, he said he would love to see Call of Duty on the Switch, and that the Xbox's intention is to treat Call of Duty like Minecraft. It looks as though the new plan is in motion. This news comes at a time when many eyes are on Microsoft and Activision Blizzard deal, and many are focused on what this merger means for Call of Duty on the PlayStation. Spencer stated that Call of Duty will ship on PlayStation as there, long as there is a PlayStation to ship to. And reports have come out saying Microsoft has offered a similar 10-year deal to Sony to keep the franchise on the platform. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think about that? Because um, that is quite amazing when you think about it. Right then, next up we have got... Uh, Black Adam will reportedly lose up to 100 million in lacklustre... Uh, basically like the theatre run. The movie is said to have earned 387 million worldwide to this point. Uh, while Black Adam may have changed the power of the DCEU, the Dwayne Johnson led blockbusters didn't win the box office over. Uh, a production of 195 million, marketing budget between 18 and 100 million, and the fact the movie theaters kept on half the ticket sale revenue, Black Adam could stand to lose between 15 and 100 million dollars at the box office. Variety reported that Black Adam will ultimately break even at 600 million, but the sources at Warner Bros. dispute this number. It's actually 425 million. I genuinely understand that Black Adam is, unspe- un- is ultimately expected to break even. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Thank you. I'll probably cut the sneeze out to apologise. Um, so, yeah, Black Adam. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm not going to do the DC vs. Marvel sort of stuff. I tried to watch Black Adam the other day, but I kind of fell asleep. So that tells you all that it needs to know, I believe. Um, Anyway, next up. Microsoft's ZeniMax Media sees 300 QA workers unionize. So the biggest union so far in the North American video game industry, around 300 quality assurance workers at Microsoft's ZeniMax Media, which owns Bethesda and other developers including Arkane Studios, Machine Games and more, have formed a union. As reported by Kotaku, the workers have formed a union with the Communications Workers of America just as groups of Raven Software and Blizzard uh, Albany did before them. But the 300 strong number is significantly more than any previous effort and now the biggest union within the North American video game industry. Uh, yeah. It's like, I do understand, um, all this about the unionization and that. Um, 
if people could be trusted, then they wouldn't need to have unions. But unfortunately, developers and publishers want the games there and then. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is going to make a difference in the world of these things? Or do you think that it's just, unfortunately, this is the world that we live in right now and there's not much that we can do? The Flash. Release date has been moved up. The Flash is arriving earlier than expected, which is to be expected for the character. Okay, that's stupid. Warner Bros. Discovery has pushed forward the release date of The Flash. The studio announced that The Flash will now premiere in theatres on June 6th, 16th, 2023, a week earlier than previously announced of June 23rd, 2023. Oh, wow. A whole week. Are you sure you guys can do it? Uh, this is likely to avoid Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which finally announced it will premiere on June 30th. The Flash has been dogged, uh, has a do- uh, has had a dogged time getting the movie into theaters. Delays, legal stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I don't know about all this kind of marvel stuff. And DC stuff. Um, I do know that a good movie is a good movie. A good action movie is a good action sort of movie. And I do enjoy some stuff. So, Toy Joe and Elle movie ad- adap- um, adaptation is Hollywood's deepest video game pull yet. Oh, it's not fucking... There was like Midway, they got battleships and shit. I guess it's not was it a video game, was it? It was more of a... Anyway... There's yet another video game to film adaptation on the way. This time it's getting funky. Space Fair and Duo, Toe Jam and Earl getting the star treatment. 90s retro action series, Toe Jam and Earl make its film debut in a project from Amazon Studios. Story Kitchen. An NBA star, Stephen Curry's anonymous media. I have no idea. I'm from the UK. And British. I don't know anything about the NBA apart from the bouncer ball around. Uh, as for its script, Hotel Transylvania 4 writers Amos Vernon and Nunzio. I have no idea. I do apologise. They're on board for the screenplay. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Todd Jam and Earl. I quite liked the first few games. Not too sure about the newer ones but the first few I really enjoyed um, but yeah I um, guess we'll have to just wait and see what direction they're going whether it's going to be live action or not anyway Microsoft President shares no Microsoft President compares Sony to Blockbuster in the latest Xbox Activision Blizzard defence um, so basically they said that Sony is as excited about this deal as Blockbuster was about the rise of Netflix. Um, basically saying that Blockbuster were the biggest in the in the field and then when Netflix came along they just crushed them. While the video game industry continues to wait and see if the Federal Trade Commission will file uh, an antitrust lawsuit to block Microsoft's $68.7 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard Microsoft is speaking out again on why the proposed deal is a pros- supposedly good for gamers. Uh, Sony has emerged as a loudest objector. It's as excited about this deal as Blockbuster was about the rise of Netflix. Think about how much better it is to stream a movie from your couch than drive to Blockbuster. We want to bring the same sort of innovation to the video game industry. Despite comparing Sony to absolute video game star, video star. Smith carried on Microsoft's ongoing self uh, strategy by saying, "The remaining third place in the console gaming stuck behind Sony's dominant PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. Uh, doesn't have enough games to draw players to Scratch Game Pass, and once again, uh, yeah, multi-platform release. So, do you guys think that this deal will go through? Do you think it won't go through? Please leave comments in the section." Of why you think these things. Um, I would like to see things happen. But I just think. It's a very slow. Long drawn out process. And 
I understand why. There's a lot of stuff going through. Anyway, <clears throat> Microsoft is raising the prices on new first-party games built for Xbox Series X and S to $70 in 2023. Forza Mossport, Redfall and Starfield will be among the first to reflect the change. So basically, all the other major publishers um, are already charged $70 and Microsoft's one of the last to go through. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you can say. Uh, it's, I mean, like, I go on to bloody the Xbox store now and I, I, I yes, I got a code for the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and it was, I can't remember the hell the edition was called. It had like a certain tag, Vault Edition, yeah, Vault Edition. And I was looking at that and when I looked at, at the Vault Edition thing, I clicked on it. It was like a hundred pound. One hundred pound for a bloody game. A game that I'd probably spend 20 minutes on, have a quick go, delete it and never touch it again. Anyway, Jedi Survivor is confirmed for the Game Awards. New key art revealed. Just hours after Star Wars Jedi Survivor's release date seemingly leaked on Steam, EA has revealed the gameplay of the highly anticipated Title will appear at the Game Awards 2022 later this week. Uh, got a brand new art for it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Yeah, so it looks as though it's been listed as March 15th next year. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you guys like the original or do you not like it? I thought it was good. I really enjoyed the, the actual game. I'm not a Star Wars fan, so I didn't care about the story. I just thought the game played nice and looked good. And... The last news that I've got in here is, unfortunately, it seems like we're talking about this all the time. It's just really depressing now. Ugh. It looks as though uh, Cheers and Look Who's Talking Star, Kirsty Alley, dies at 71. Um, so Ali passed away following a recent cancer diagnosis. American actor Kirstie Alley has died in the wake of a recent cancer discovery. The news was announced via the actor's social media channels where her family paid tribute to her strength. She was 71. Uh, which is crazy. I mean, I think my dad was 71. He died of cancer just last month, a couple of months ago. Uh, she made her film debut in 1982's Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. But rose to fame later, decades on the small screen... And Cheers, she also, uh, following departure, mm. oh, I don't know, yeah, so, so she also starred with John Travolta in Look Who's Talking, I don't even know what else she's starred in, to be honest, it's one of those actors that I know the name of, but I don't really know what she's done, uh, is that quite bad to say? But um, condolences go out um, from everyone at uh, One Up Gaming. Uh, thank you for making Cheers one of the greatest comedy sitcoms of all time. So, UK Top 40. Number 40, Mario Strikers Battle League Football. Lego Marvel Superheroes. Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Just Dance 2020. NBA 2K23. Number 35, The Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Luigi's Mansion 3, Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, Gran Turismo 7, number 30, Nickelodeon Kart Racers, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, Saints Row, Lego Jurassic World, Marvel Midnight Suns, is that only just coming at 26? Ooh, not great. 25, Mario Party Superstars, Grand Theft Auto 5, Horizon Forbidden West, Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, Gotham Knights, uh, number 20 is Kirby in the Forgotten Land, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Need for Speed Unbound, only at 17 as well, oof, that's normally like a massive sell of that. Just Dance 2022, number 15, The Lego Harry Potter Collection, Just Dance 2023, Splatoon, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and at number 10, Minecraft, number 9, Sonic Frontiers, 
Number eight, Nintendo Switch Sports. Number seven, Pokemon Scarlet. Number six, The Callisto Protocol. Number five, Pokemon Violet. Number four, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Number three, God of War Ragnarok. Number two, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And at number one, still, FIFA 23. And that's thanks to Games Press and the GFK Entertainment Software Charts, all formats. So thank you for that. And yeah, so that has been episode 328 of the One Up Gaming podcast. Uh, please go to our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk. Please um, help us on Patreon, which is just patreon.com slash O-U-G. Uh, we have these jumpers and t-shirts available to buy. Just go to the oneupgaming.co.uk website. And at the top right-hand corner, there's um, online store. There's jumpers, t-shirts, different designs, different colours. Please help us. Um, our album is available. Games inspired music and 20% of each sale will go to the Charles Play Charity. Buy it, stream it. Anything you want. We have our audio book available. It's not our audio book. Jesus, I'm stupid. We have our first 100 podcasts available from audiobooksontape.com. And this is like a... looks like a cassette tape, but it's a USB stick inside. It's pretty cool. And one pound of each sale will go to the Diabetes UK charity. So please help them. Please subscribe to us on Facebook. Just search One Up Gaming on our YouTube channel. We're nearly at 2,000, so please help us get over 2,000 as quickly as possible. It's just a nice number to get to. And again, that's just One Up Gaming. Uh, I think the full thing is youtube.com slash One Up Gaming 1. Or I think you can now use the the little tag, which is at O-U-G U-K. So when it's like a short, snappy little thing. And OUG UK is really good. Um, follow us on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash OUG official. If you want to tweet us, it's at OUG official. Any comments, any questions, anything like that. And if you want to message us on our um, the email address. Jesus, I'm just stupid. Uh, please email us at contact at one And that is that. Um, if you're listening to us, please subscribe to us on like, the iTunes or whatever you subscribe to your podcasts with and give us five stars and positive feedback it helps with the rankings and searches and everything and that my friends is this week's podcast done so thank you all and we'll see you next week goodbye hi Justin the voice here first of all we'd like to thank you for listening seriously we really like it when you listen Yes. But if you'd like to do more than just listen, if you'd like to help us out, well, we have an idea just for you. Visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. Your monthly micropayment will help us keep going all night long, baby. Oh, yeah. Mostly because we usually record at night. Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry, baby. We got something for you, too. We've got special benefits for all of our Patreon subscribers. Yeah. Again, that's www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. Hey, guys. Justin here. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. We love all of our listeners. Yes, even you. If you get a chance, head on over to iTunes and give us a rating. We really appreciate it, and it really helps us out. It'll keep the good times going for a long time to come. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next episode. The hunt is on. The panic's here You can't find a wheeze This time of year Simply can't find a way around Christmas time Simply can't find a way around Christmas time The moon is bright We're camping out Get one tonight 
or they'll sell out. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. The clerks at Walmart say they're gone. Just won't pay five hundred bucks. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. The clerks at GameStop sing this song. They say the wees are gone. Shopping list like a Santa Claus. They don't exist. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. Stuck. I'll wait in line till they're in stock in 2009. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. Simply can't find a way around Christmas time. Oh. 